So there's a lot of debates on television about the NBA's MVP. And, and the truth is that these debates didn't take place in public nearly as much back in my day. Right? And I, I honestly believe that there's a certain, maybe even diabolical genius to what, frankly, ESPN's been able to do, right? ESPN overpaid to get the, the NBA, and because of it, in an effort to make the regular season more meaningful, it's like, why would I watch? Well, there's the MVP debate. Right? We, just, we didn't have the MVP debate. It wasn't a thing for a long time. Like, yeah, was it quirky? Was it interesting? But now it's, it's become the discussion, right? I mean, there's even been some, uh, you know, the Kendrick Perkins argument of racism or racially biased voting, which is just bizarre. Um, also inaccurate in terms of the racial makeup. Like there's lots of different factors at play there. But what if I told you that I think the NBA's MVP is not Jokic, is not Embiid, is not Giannis? And they go, here we go. You're sitting in for Colin. Got to be LeBron. No, it's not LeBron. And most people who listen to me know I think Kevin Durant, when healthy, is actually the best player in the league. All right? But it's not Kevin Durant. He got hurt. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't put him as the MVP. Jalen Brunson, I would. You're like, come on, dude. He wasn't an all-star. And be, because fans know so much that they didn't vote for him to be an all-star? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. If you just take the records, and there's a couple of other ancillary switches that have been made, but last year this time, the New York Knicks were a uh, smoldering dumpster fire, right? Julius Randle was incredibly unhappy. Tom Thibodeau, too rigid, not going to work. They finished the season 37 and 45. This year, as of right now, they're 47 and 33. Okay. And the addition is Jalen Brunson. Now, he's not their leading scorer, but he's right there. Obviously, leads them in assists and in steals. But there's a leadership quotient that you cannot calculate, there's a cultural uh, calculation. That is impossible to make. But simply adding Jalen Brunson on a deal where, at the time, people said, you overpaid for him. And they massively underpaid, considering what he's given them, has changed the trajectory of the Knicks franchise, of Tom Thibodeau's probably coaching tenure in New York, and of other players on the team. Like, that's the missing element to the Steve Nash shouldn't have won the MVP argument. Like, we just look at raw stats and data, and you're like, oh, well, okay, go back and look. Like, Sean Marion made more money than he ever probably could have imagined or should have because, well, he got to play uh, an undersized four, and he had one of the greatest passers in the history of the sport setting him up. Amari Stoudemire, okay, scored countless points, made countless amounts of money. And is Amari Stoudemire really all that good? Look at the seasons and the success when he didn't play with Steve Nash. Ask Rajah Bell what Steve Nash did. I, I, I fully understand, okay? I fully understand that, uh, that Giannis Antetokounmpo can completely dominate a game at both ends if he, and games in which he hits jump shots, he becomes incredibly unguardable. I get it. The sheer force of Joel Embiid, along with an incredible amount of skill, can dominate a game at both ends. I get it. And you just look and they jump off the screen and how big they are. And you're looking at tangibles. I'm calculating tangibles with intangibles. And it's not, I'm not giving him a pass because he's small. I'm not giving him a pass because he doesn't blow by people and doesn't dunk on people like John Morant does. No, no, no. I'm just telling you in terms, he's effective whether he goes by people or doesn't. He shoots a high percentage from the field, from three, from the free throw line. And low turnover, super high assist to turnover ratio, doesn't turn the basketball over, and he's a tremendous defensive player. And the team wins, and everybody else around him is better because of it. That's real value, okay? That's real value. 
And yeah, I am going to calculate a little bit the fact that he won two national championships. But it's because of the culture that he absorbs and then helps spread to the rest of the locker room. I just ask anybody who's a Knicks fan. Did you like watching him play the past couple of years? Do you like watching him play now? And the only thing that's really changed is Jalen Brunson. I understand he's not the most athletic. I understand he's not the biggest. I understand that to you, you can't see his dominance because you don't have the, the maybe basketball IQ that I believe that I possess. I'm just telling you, that dude can dominate a game without blowing by anybody, okay? without dunking on anybody. He just makes plays and makes people better at both ends of the floor and spreads a culture that makes his team more competitive and allows others to be more successful. In many ways, it's the stuff that LeBron did for years. Only now, he's 40 years old, he can't do it at the defensive end, and he can't do it every night, and Jalen Brunson can. It's just in a smaller package, and it's hard for you to calculate the intangibles along with the tangibles.